where it is an acrostic where they take, they have a verse for every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. You might have noticed other, other chapters like that. Psalm 119 is like that. Psalm 119 is, is like an acrostic on steroids. It's, a, it's got 22 sections and they each start with the different, the consecutive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And then each section has eight verses and each of those verses starts with that, that letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Lamentations as well, if you ever looked at that. Uh, each chapter is 22 verses. The middle chapter is 66 verses. And it has to do with the, the Hebrew alphabet. That's, that's what this here is in uh, Psalm 25 as well. Um, and uh, for me, this study started with verse 21. Um, I've been reading through Psalms in my devotions, and verse 21 says, Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. And uh, I just, over the weeks that I've been going through Psalms, I've been writing down a few that I wanted to uh, talk to you about. And this was one, integrity. Integrity is a good word. I, I realized as I studied this, it only appears in the Old Testament, that word. <laughs> uh, the concept, of course, is right through, through Scripture. But um, as you look at, at Psalm 25, he, he kind of takes us on a, a little bit of a, a journey, and uh, particularly the, the theme of waiting on the Lord or lifting up our soul uh, to the Lord. And that's, that's the way that we'll have integrity. Now, integrity really has to do with being all the stuff being consistent. Uh, if, if a building has integrity, it means that it all works together and all, all fits together and has a consistency to it. And, and in our life, uh, we need integrity. And the way to do that is to, to come to the Lord. Let's, let's go to ch chapter 25 verses. I'll read verses 1 through 5. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. And he uses those expressions, uh, lifting up our soul to the Lord and, and waiting on the Lord. You know, as, as I read those, I thought, well, what does that really mean? You know, lift up my soul to the Lord. Um, how can I lift up my soul to the Lord? The, the main way I've always pictured it, I don't think it's actually the main way that this is expressing it. You know, I kind of pictured it as, you know, kind of taking your soul and handing it to the Lord, you know. <laughs> um, and in a way, uh, part of integrity or how, part of lifting our soul up to the Lord is recognizing his ownership. Like he talks about there in verse, verse 1, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Uh, God made it, us a living soul, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2. Uh, only God can deliver your soul. In, Genesis, uh, in Psalm 25, verse 20, Keep my soul and deliver me. He's the one who, who deals with it. Uh, we, we sang 1 Corinthians 6 uh, about yielding our, our body and our soul to the Lord, which belong to him, which are God's. You know, they belong to God. Uh, God made you to know him. And uh, the phrase, lift up my soul to the Lord, it reminds me of the sacrifices in the Old Testament where they would take uh, whatever they were sacrificing and they would offer it to the Lord. And, and in one sense, that's uh, lifting up our soul to the Lord. We just recognize that he has ownership. Uh, we're made to know the Lord. But I think that the main reality here is lifting up our soul to the Lord means looking to him and trusting him. Um, if I were to use a phrase like scripture does, where we lift up our eyes, uh, in uh, Genesis, for instance, verse 30, chapter 33 and, and verse 1, it says, Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came. He lifted up his eyes and looked. We, we understand that. That's easy to understand. Well, it's, 
similar in a, in a way when we lift up our soul. We're, we're just looking to the Lord. Um, you know, when I lift up my eyes, I look at something. I focus physically. When I lift up my soul, I look to the Lord with, with all that I am. Uh, soul is an interesting word. Or the word soul is, is interesting because it's more than just, like if you just talk about your body, well, that's, that's your body. If you talk about you know, different parts of, of who you are, your soul really encompasses all that you are. Body, soul, and, and spirit. And uh, you know, as we lift up our soul, it means we focus our life on Him. We lift up our soul uh, to the Lord. And it's important that we do that. You know, it's important that we lift up our, our soul to the Lord because He's the one who knows how we should live. In uh, Psalm 143 and uh, verse 8, I'll just read that for you. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. You know, it's the Lord who knows. And if we'll look to him, uh, he, can, he can guide us. Uh, Job made this comment, He knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And he looked to the Lord. We, we sang the song, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, we lift up our soul to God because he knows how we should live. Uh, we do it because he's our guide. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to be ignorant of what God has for us. If you look at chapter 25, verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. You know, a lot of people don't know what God wants for them. And, you know, a secret is just something you don't know. <laughs> well, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. When we look to the Lord, we can know what he wants. Uh, we don't always have to be questioning everything. We can be trusting him, just putting our hand in his and going with him. Uh, one of the reasons people don't understand is they're not living verse 15 mine eyes are ever toward the lord <laughs> you know they're not they're not looking to the lord they're not lifting up their soul uh, to the lord and we lift up our soul because he's our our support let me read the rest of the chapter there verse 16 turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me for i am desolate and afflicted the troubles of my heart are enlarged oh bring thou me out of my distresses Look upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. He's just looking to the Lord to, to help him in all the things that he's, he's going through. I wait on thee. Uh, that phrase, I wait on thee, is very similar to the first, the one in the verse 1, I lift up my soul uh, to the Lord, uh, waiting on the Lord. If you look at uh, chapter 25 there, verse 3, yea, let, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Uh, verse 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Uh, waiting on the Lord. Uh, lifting our, our soul to the Lord is just focusing our life uh, on Him. And, and one of the things we're doing when we are waiting on the Lord is we're giving Him our expectations. One of the killers of life is expectations. <laughs> um, you know, we, we expect this and we get that. Um, Psalm 62, verse 5, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. We need to give God our, our expectations. And that's, that's not something for the faint-hearted. Uh, it takes courage to just trust the Lord for, for your future, for what's going to happen. In Psalm 27, verse 14, he says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. 
and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It takes courage to wait on the Lord, but he'll supply the strength you need. And like he said in chapter 25, we, we don't need to be ashamed. Uh, sometimes the world will mock us for trusting the Lord. You'll experience that. Um, and it takes courage to, to trust him. It takes faith to trust him. In, take a look at Psalm 123. I might read the whole chapter on this one. It's only a few verses. Psalm 123. He says, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden under the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. See, it's not so much a contempt for ourself, it's that when you trust the Lord, there will be people who say, oh, trust in the Lord. What a, what a ridiculous thing. It takes faith. It takes courage. And we need to be careful that we're not just trying to work things out ourselves. You know, a lot of times the temptation is, well, I'll, I want this and I want that, so I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that and it'll all work out. Uh, we need to be trusting the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Uh, we sang Isaiah 40, 31. And uh, you know, it's just talking about how, how that the Lord can, uh, can uh, bless us above all that, that we could imagine. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God promises to, to help us. The, the problem sometimes is that we take the world's alternative. Instead of lifting up our eyes to the Lord... We lift up our eyes to other things. Now, I, I just came across a couple of verses that, that mention this. One is Psalm 24, verse 4. Psalm 24, verse 4. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Now, it's talking about who is the Lord going to bless? Who, who, will, who will ascend, in verse 3, to the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. A lot of times we lift up our eyes to vanity. Now, by that, it's just the things of the world, things that don't last, things that aren't eternal. The word vain means empty, and no eternal value. Um, John put it this way in 1 John 2. He says, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. I mean, stop and think about it. it. It's real easy to lift your eyes up to the things the world offers. And, uh, you know, you, you have a choice. You can lift your, your soul up to the Lord, or you can lift your soul up to the world. Uh, the other verse I came across, it's a little more obscure, Habakkuk 2, verse 4. You can turn there or just listen to it. Um, it has a, a phrase that you'll, you'll recognize. Habakkuk 2, 4 says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So some of the people who lift up their soul or, or uh, they're, they're lifted up, but not to the Lord. It's not upright. And that word, we started off talking about the word integrity. Quite often, sometimes it's translated upright, and it's often associated integrity and uprightness. And he's saying that there's, there's a difference between trusting the Lord, lifting up your soul to the Lord, and this other way. Uh, God wants us to have integrity. Uh, that means a consistency to our life. Probably most of us at some time or another have cut an orange where you can see the segments. Now, if you have an orange and... Uh, I don't know how many, does anybody know how many segments are in an orange? I guess it's probably some magical number. Um, let's say 10. <laughs> say all, all 10 of those are just perfect. That's integrity. 
But if you cut through that orange, and you've probably experienced it, and one or two of them are just a bit bad, well, that's, that means it doesn't have integrity. There's, there's a problem with it. And our lives are a lot of times like that. You know, we, we focus on all the good bits, and, you know, we can eat around the bad bits and that kind of thing. But God wants us to have integrity. He wants us to lift up our eyes to him in everything. And not only in everything, all the time. You know, th there's no time when we should ignore the Lord. Uh, there's no time when we can do the wrong thing and have it be the right thing. Uh, wrong is always wrong. And, you know, when he talks there in Habakkuk, he's talking about you can't live by pride and by faith. You can't uh, lift up your eyes to, to the wrong things and still uh, lift up your soul to the Lord. Uh, God wants us to focus on him. He said in Psalm 25, Under thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. And I, it, it's important for us to apply this to every part of, of life, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, some struggle with one area more than another. And, you know, if somebody else struggles with something that you don't have a struggle with, oh, we can, we can really condemn them, you know. But, uh, oh, we've got excuses for our, our struggles. Um, you know, sometimes it's the physical. Sometimes it's the spiritual. And I think it's a good application to make as well. We often use the word soul to refer to our mind, will, and emotions. Uh, a lot of times that's a struggle. You know, our thinking, uh, our, our will, uh, our, our feelings. Uh, we need to lift up our soul to the Lord and uh, seek his, his face on, on these things. Every part of our life, all the time. On thee do I wait all the day, he says there in verse 5 of, of Psalm 25. I, I might be 95% right with the Lord. The part he's going to bring to my attention is going to be that 5%. What about that? He wants me to have integrity. And God understands. I mean, God deals with us as we are. But uh, he wants us to lift up our soul to the Lord. Let me encourage you this evening. Look, look to the Lord. Let him sustain you in, in these things. Live by faith. Uh, a good prayer is Psalm 25, verse 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. And we need the Lord to help us to be uh, right in every area of life. And uh, we need to be careful we don't excuse uh, areas where we're wrong. We need to let the Lord convict us and, and bring us to, to do what's right. We don't often do this, but I thought, uh, Doyle, if you wouldn't mind coming, if you just keep your Bibles open there to Psalm 25, and let's sing some of those first few verses. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? I think we know that. The second verse is kind of the chorus, and we, we repeat that. Psalm 25, verses 1 through 4. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed that not mine enemies triumph. Shame. Let them be ashamed, which transgress without cause. Oh my God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Verse four. Show me Thy way.
We'll go ahead and take some uh, prayer requests this evening. I guess I can leave that over there. Um,